Hi everybody, in this video we're going to go over the review sheet for test 4, um, which is on the transformations unit. So the first question asks for the image of 5, negative 2 under a reflection over the line y equals x. So we could use our rules of reflection and to reflect over the line y equals x, all we need to do is take our original point and switch the order of the coordinates. So that tells me that the answer is going to be choice 4, negative 2, negative 5. We also talked about doing these kinds of questions graphically, so I also want to show you how to do it graphically. So I graph the line y equals x. That's just a slanted line that passes through the origin and has a slope of 1. And I graph the point that we're reflecting, the point 5, comma, negative 2. So all we're going to do is we're going to count the diagonal boxes to the line, and we're going to move it the same number of boxes to the other side of the line. So counting diagonally, we have one diagonal box, two, three, and a half. So moving that same distance, I have a half, one, two, three. And it's really hard to draw here on the computer, so hopefully you could follow my movement over there. And that's the point negative two, five. So once again, you don't have to use any rules. All you need to do is take the point, count the spaces to the line, and move it the equal number of spaces to the other side of the line. The next question is asking for the image of the point 5, comma 2 under a rotation of 90 degrees. Remember, when it doesn't specify the direction, it's assumed that we're rotating counterclockwise. So our rule for rotating 90 degrees counterclockwise is to take our original coordinates and to both switch the order of the coordinates and to make the original y coordinate the opposite sign. So the answer here, when we make the original y coordinate the opposite sign, that would make that 2 negative 2, and we switch the order, would be the point negative 2 comma 5. Number 3 says whether the coordinates of a prime the image of a negative 3 4 after a rotation 180 degrees around the origin and I also forgot to mention for the number two that when it doesn't specify the center of rotation is the origin so for number three a rotation of 180 degrees both clockwise and counterclockwise the rule is that you take the original coordinate and you switch the signs on both of the coordinates so switching the sign on negative 3 would be positive 3. Switching the sign on 4 would be negative 4. So that's answer choice 4, the point 3, comma, negative 4. Number 4 says, when the transformation T to negative 1 is performed on point A, its image is point A prime, negative 3, 4. And it's asking us for the coordinates of A. So we have to work backwards here. So if to get from the original point to its image, we need to add 2 to the x-coordinate and subtract 1 from the y-coordinate. Doing the opposite of that, working backwards, should bring us from a prime to a. So I'm going to take the ending point, the image point, negative 3, 4, and instead of adding 2 minus 1, I'm going to subtract 2 and plus 1. So negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. And 4 plus 1 is 5. We can also make sure that we found the right uh, coordinate by doing it graphically. So I plotted point A. Um, that was the point negative 3, 4. And the translation, so that was A prime, before I do this incorrectly, so that was A prime. And the point that we found for A was negative 5, 5. So let me just take a second and graph that one here. That was negative 5, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Right over here. And let's just double check that this is the correct point. So to get from A to A prime, we should be able to go right 2 and down 1. So let's see if that works. Right, two, and down one. So we did find the correct point, 
the correct point is the point negative 5, 5 for A. So I'm going to circle that one. Number 5 is asking us how you get from triangle ABC to triangle A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. And we know that a sequence of transformations happened here, or a composition of transformations, which means more than one transformation happened to get us from ABC to A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. Two transformations happened. One transformation took us from the original to A prime, B prime, C prime. And the next transformation took us from A prime, B prime, C prime to A double prime, B double prime, C double prime. So mm -hmm. let's see what happened from this triangle to this triangle, because that's the one that came first. And all of the coordinates are in the same spots in the same order. So the orientation is the same. It was just moved down a little bit and to the right a little bit. So that tells me a translation happened first. So I'm going to cross out choices one and two because they don't start with a translation. Then from this triangle to this triangle, the orientation change, C was here and now it's here, B was here and now it's here, A was here and now it's here. But it does look like this triangle was flipped over the y-axis. They're mirror images on both sides of the y-axis. So that tells me a reflection happened. Um, because it flipped, it's a mirror image. It wasn't turned, it was flipped. So that tells us answer choice four is the correct answer here. For number six, it gives us the endpoints of line segment AB. Let me take a second and graph them. Okay, so now I have point A and point B graphed, and I connected them with the line segment. And it's asking us to state the coordinates of A prime and B prime, the images of A and B after a reflection in the Y axis. So remember that, I'm oh, sorry, in the X axis, I was reading the question incorrectly. So remember that the X axis is, oops, I was supposed to get a line for that. The X axis is right over here. So we're just going to take each of the points and move them an equal distance from the line of reflection. So from point A to the x-axis, it's two spaces. So we're going to go another two spaces. And that puts us right over here for A prime. For B, we're going to count. And that's one, two, three, four, five, six spaces. So I'm going to go another six spaces. One, two, three, four, five, six. And that puts us to where B prime should be, right over here. Let me connect these together, and then I'm going to write down what the coordinates should be. Okay, so let me write down what the coordinates of these points are. So point A prime is the point 0, negative 2. And point B prime is the point 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 6. And there we have it. Let's move on to the next one. So the next one is asking us to state and label the coordinates of triangle A prime, B prime, C prime, the image of triangle ABC after a dilation of one third. Um, so that's the scale factor, one-third. So since our dilation doesn't specify it's centered, we can tell that it's centered at the origin. So we can use the rule where we just take all of the coordinates and we multiply them by the scale factor, which is one-third. So A prime should be 6 divided by 3 is 3. This is not writing well. 6 divided by 3 is 3. B prime should be 9 divided by 3 is, oh no, did I just do that division incorrectly? Oops, my fault. 6 divided by 3 is 2. 9 divided by 3 is 3. 0 divided by 3 is 0. And finally for C prime, 3 divided by 3 is 1. Negative 3 divided by 3 is negative 1. We can also do this graphically. So let me just take a second and graph the points. Since our dilation is centered at the origin, all that we need to do is take each of the points and count the distance that it is from the center of dilation and then take one third of that. 
So first I'll do A. So to get to A, we're going to go up 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So up 6. And to the right, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So since I want a scale factor of 1 third, I'm going to take a third of that distance. Um, so half of 6 would be 3. A third of 6 would be 2. So what I'm going to do to find A prime is instead of going up 6, right 6, I'm just going to go up 2 and over 2. And that's where A prime should be. And also, let me connect those original points together so that we can see the difference in size after we do dilate all the points. So here's the original triangle. Okay, let's go back to dilating the other two points. So I'm going to start at the center of dilation, and I'm going to count to point C. So I'm going to go down 1, 2, 3, and to the right, 1, 2, 3. So I want a third of that. So instead of going down three and left three, I'm going to go down one. So here's down one. Sorry, down three and right three. Instead of going down three and right three, I'm going to go down one and right one. And that brings us right over here to point C prime. And finally, for B, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to count from the center of dilation, which is the origin, to point B. So I'm going to go over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So it's 9 spaces to the right to get from the center to point B. So 1 third of 9, a third of that distance would be 3. So to find C prime, I'm going to just go 1, 2, 3. And that puts me right over here. Oops, I meant to write B. That's B prime right over here. Okay, so now let me connect my new points together. Let me get a different color to do that. So A prime, B prime, and C prime. And notice here how our prime is both one third of the size of the original triangle. And our image is also one third of the distance from the center of dilation as the original figure ABC. So if you write down the coordinates of the point, it's the same that we found by multiplying on the previous slide. So that would be a prime, one, two, one, two, 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 two. B prime would be one, two, three, zero. And C prime would be one, negative one. Same exact points as we got on the previous slide. And the graphic method works even if you're not centered at the origin. For the last one on this page, number eight, it says the image of triangle ABC under a translation is A prime, B prime, C prime. Under this translation, B maps on to B prime. And using this translation, we have to state the original coordinates of point A. So first we need to figure out what the translation was that happened. So we went from B to B prime, and B was 3, negative 2, and B prime was 1, negative 1. So what happened from B to B prime is that the x coordinates decreased by 2, and the y coordinates increased by 1. So now that we figured out what the translation was, we can work backwards since we are given A prime to figure out what the original point A was. So to get from A to A prime, we subtract two and add one. So to get, to get from A prime to A, we're gonna do the opposite. We're gonna add two and subtract one. So adding two to negative two, we get zero. And subtracting one from two, we get one. And we can check this out graphically to make sure we got the right answer. So I just graphed the points B, B prime, and A prime, and we can see to get from point B to point B prime, we go left, two, and up one. So the translation that happened was what we said before, left, two, and up one. So now to figure out where A is, we're just going to do the opposite. We're going to go right, two, so right, two and down one. So that would put point A over here. Oh, 
not a prime point a over here so that would be the point zero one the same point that we had before and we can check that it makes sense because it should follow the same translation as from b to b prime left two and up one if i go left two and up one from a i do end up at a prime Number nine is asking us to do a sequence or a composition of transformations. And remember, whenever you see that little circle symbol, that means do one transformation and then the next. We always start with the transformation on the right first, and then we do the one on the left. So the capital R tells us that first we're going to be rotating, and our center of rotation is the origin, and we're going to be doing a 90 degree rotation. Remember, when it doesn't specify, it's assumed that we're going counterclockwise. So our rule for a rotation of 90 degrees counterclockwise is to take our original coordinate to switch the order of the points and also to make our original y coordinate negative. So after the rotation, 90 degrees, the point 1, 1 should become, 1 becomes negative 1, and we switch the order, should become the point negative 1, 1. So let me graph that, negative 1, 1, right over here. And now it's asking us next to reflect our point over the x-axis. So this was the, our point that resulted after the rotation. So now we're going to take this point and reflect it over the x-axis. So it's one space from the x-axis, so I'm going to move it another space. And here we have our final point. And that's the point, negative 1, negative 1. So that should be our answer, choice number 4. For number 10, it gives us the coordinates of a triangle. I'm just going to take a second and graph that. So I graphed my triangle, and it's asking us to first reflect the triangle over the y-axis, and then to translate it. So first off, to reflect it over the y-axis, I'm going to count the spaces from each point to the line of reflection. So R is 1, 2, 3 spaces to the line, so I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3 spaces to the other side of the line, and that's R prime. B is 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to the line, so I'm going to move it 1, 2, 3, 4 spaces to the other side of the line. J is one space to the line, so I'm going to move it one space on the other side of the line. Okay, so now we have our triangle after a reflection over the y-axis. Let me just graph this line so now we can see our triangle. Okay, our last transformation that we have to do is we need to take all the points that we just found and we need to translate them two uh, to the right and one down. So let's do it. I'm gonna take this point, two to the right and one down. That's right over here. So that's the point R double prime, two to the right and one down. It's right here. That's the point J double prime. And two to the right, one down that's right over here that's the point b double prime so let me connect them together and then i will write down the coordinates of those points so those are my coordinates in black okay let me write down these points so j double prime is 1, negative 1, negative 2, negative uh, 3. R double prime is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 is 5, 5. And E double prime is negative 1, negative 2. One, two, three, four. So that is answer choice number three. For number 11, it says pentagon ABCDE is congruent to the image pentagon after a transformation. 
And what we need to do is pick the series, the sequence of rigid motions that makes this pentagon into this one. And remember, rigid motion just means a transformation that makes the image congruent into the pre-image. So the only transformation that's not a rigid motion is dilation. So if that was in the answer choices, we would be able to eliminate that right away. That doesn't make a congruent figure, um, but it's not here. So we have to take a look at the answer choices. So first, I'm going to just take a look and see if I can figure out myself how we can get from here to here. Well, if I take this and I turn it, then I can make it facing the same way as the shape. But if I turn it, it's going to end up over here. So then I'd need to bring it down and sliding it is a translation. So I'm going to look for rotation and rotation should be in this direction. And I just wanted to go over one quadrant. So it would be have to be centered at the origin to turn a quadrant because I would like it to go just doing like a estimate graph over here. I'm very bad at drawing. So I want it to turn this way so that it's facing, let me use my pen here, so that it's facing the same way as the pentagon on the bottom. So that would be around the origin to make it move quadrants. That would be 90 degrees because I want to shift one quadrant over and that's the counterclockwise direction. And then I would want to bring it down. So that would be a translation down. And the only choice that says that is choice two. So we found that over here. Okay, that was exactly what I was thinking. Okay, number 12, we are, we have triangle ABC and triangle XYZ. And we need to explain why the two triangles are congruent. So let's think about what happened. So to get from here to here, a needs to match up with X, so those should be in the same spot. B needs to match up with Y, so those should be in the same spot. And C needs to match up with Z, so those should be in the same spot. So if we just reflect it over the line, um, if we reflect it over here, it's not going to be oriented the right way. A is going to map up to Y and B is going to map up to X, but we need the opposite. We need A to map onto X and we need B to map onto Y. So that's not going to work. So let's think about other transformations that we can do. So let me check out reflections. Let's say I reflect it over the Y axis. A will be here. C will be here. So I'm going to just label it. So it'll be A prime. C prime and one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five. And B prime would be over here. So let's say I did that and then I reflected it over the y axis. If I reflected over the y axis, A, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four would map onto X, which is what we need. A should map onto X. One. So another one, C would map up to Z, and that's what we need. C and Z should map up. And one, one, B would map onto Y. So one way that we can get from this triangle to this one is we can reflect over the Y axis and then over the X axis. Um, another way is that you can just rotate by, I believe, 180 degrees, and that would accomplish the same thing. So whichever way that you looked at it, whether it's a reflection or rotation, um, the answer would be the same but I'm going to just go with reflection because that's the way I saw it. So to get from triangle ABC to triangle XYZ, you can reflect over Y axis then x axis reflections are rigid motions and rigid motions let me continue this up here preserve side lengths and 
angle measures. And so they make congruent figures. And you can use this explanation for any of the rigid motions for reflections, rotations, or translations. Um, rigid motions preserve side lengths and angle measures, so they produce congruent figures. If the triangles are congruent and AB is equal to 8, what is the length of XY? Well, AB should map up to XY. It's the hypotenuse of the right triangle. So that should also be 8. And our reason for that could be that rigid motions, like reflections, make congruent pre-images and images. The image will be congruent to the pre-image. So if the hypotenuse was 8 in the pre-image, it's also going to be 8 for the image. This one is asking us to reflect the triangle over the line x is equal to 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is graph the line x is equal to 1. So that is a vertical line that passes through the x-coordinate 1, 0. So there we have our line x is equal to 1. Now we can just reflect over it. So that's one space. One space would be right here. So that's B prime. One space. One more space would be here. That's C prime. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. A prime would be over here. So there we have our reflection over the line x is equal to 1. Be careful not to reflect over the y-axis. You're reflecting over the line x is equal to 1. For number 14, we have a square. And let me draw this. We have a square. And the square is R, S, T, V. And it tells us that R, S is 9 centimeters and that we're dilating it by a scale factor of 3. So it's going to get 3 times bigger. This is just an estimate line. OK. And we need to figure out the perimeter after the dilation. So before the dilation, the perimeter was out of all the sides, 9, 18, 27, 36. We're dilating by a scale factor of 3. So 27 for all of the sides. And then all we need to do is 27 times 4. So the problem is 108. And notice that the perimeter is, if we do 108 divided by the original perimeter 36, it's three times as large as the original perimeter. So the area of the original shape was 81, 9 times 9. The area of the dilated shape would be 27 times 27, which is 729 centimeters squared. So I'm going to write that here, 729 centimeters squared. If you do the area of the dilated shape, 729, divided by the area of the preimage, 81, um, notice that it's 9 times bigger because the scale factor was 3. Okay. Here they give us two triangles, ABC and DEF, and they tell us that AB is congruent to DE. They tell us that AC is congruent to DF. And they tell us that angle A is congruent to angle B. So these are the parts that need to match up with each other. We need to write a sequence of transformations that maps triangle ABC onto triangle DEF. So there's not always one correct answer to these, but one way that we can do it is we can take this triangle and we can move it up and to the right so that C maps on to F. See, that way you can see that this is F over here. So that C maps up to F. 
And if we do that, um, I'm just going to draw this really terribly. But it would look something like this. A, B, and then C would be on F. From here, um, so I'm going to write that down. So, wait, actually, let me talk about the next part, and then we'll write it all down together. So, the next thing that we can do, since we need A, let re me remark it, so that we need A to map up with B, is that, and also we need AB to map up with ED, and we need AC to map up with FD over here, is we can take this triangle and we can just turn it so that it's laying down. And if we lay it down so it's facing the same way as this triangle, A will lay down on D, B will lay down on E, and C is already on F after the translation. So our center of rotation would be C because it's already matched up at C. We don't want to move the spot. We want to keep C on F. We just want to take the rest of the triangle and turn it down so it overlaps. So C um, is going to be our center of rotation. And we want to rotate it. I don't know exactly how many degrees, but we want to rotate it until angle A maps on to angle D and then until angle B maps on to angle E. So I just wrote down an explanation of what we just said. First, translate triangle ABC up and to the right so that angle C maps onto angle F, and then rotate triangle ABC centered at angle C, so that angle A maps onto angle D, side AB maps onto side ED, and side AC maps onto side FD. For the next question, it's telling us that triangle ADE is the image of triangle ABC after a dilation. It's asking us what the center of dilation is. So remember, whenever you're doing a dilation, the pre-image, the image, and the center of dilation should all be on the same line. So I'm connecting image, corresponding pre-image point, and the only other thing on this line is A. Let me check it out here. Image point, pre-image point, the only other thing on this line is angle A. So A is the center of dilation. That's where all the pre-image and image points are coming out of. So that's A. If AC is 6 and CE is 12, what is the scale factor? Well, that makes the whole side 18. Um, so we can do image over pre-image. So that would be 18 over 6. And we find that the scale factor is 3. Um, the triangles are similar. Dilations produce smaller figures. Remember, that's because after dilation, the image will be the same shape, but it won't be the same size. Um, but it will be similar because even though the size either increases or decreases, the side lanes will be proportional by the same scale factor. For the next one, it's telling us that the line was dilated. Which line here could be the, the image? So I'm going to take the original line and put it into y equals mx plus b form. So that would be y equals to negative 2 over 3x plus 8 over 3. So after a dilation, remember the slope stays the same. So first, I'm just going to go through all the answer choices and see if any have the same slope. If there's more than one, then we'll have to, you know, think about the y-intercept. Maybe we'll graph this out. Um, but if uh, it's going to be kind of hard to graph because the y-intercept is eight, uh, 8 over 3. So let's solve each one and see if we can find any with the same slope because dilations produce parallel lines. So let's try 1. I'm just going to solve for y. So that would be 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. So y is equal to negative 2 over 3x plus 5 over 3. So already we found one with the same slope. I'm going to put a check next to it. Let's see if the other ones have different slopes. If they do, then this would be our answer. If not, we'll have to you know think about it some more. The next one, let me solve for y. So we have negative 3y is equal to negative 2x plus 5. So that would be y is equal to 2 over 3x minus 5 over 3. So 2 is not the correct answer choice. It does not have the same slope as the original line.
So let me get some more space so I can do more of them. So three would be next. So let me solve that one for y. So we have two y is equal to negative three x plus five. And already I can see this is gonna have a different slope, but I'll finish it out here so that you can see as well. That is L. And finally, for number four, we have negative 2y is equal to negative 3x plus 5. Solving for y, that is 3 over 2. Already we have a different slope. Um, that's minus 5 over 2. So 4 is out. So 1 is our correct answer. Remember that dilations preserve parallelism. So a line before and after a dilation would have the same slope. For 18, it just says to identify one line of symmetry. So let me draw in a couple of lines of symmetry. So I can draw this line of symmetry in. So that would be the line x is equal to 4. That's one option. Um, yep, it just says 1. So I think that would be good. Okay, let's move forward. If you have a different one, that's fine too. But this works. Okay, so the instructions on this were changed to um, just write the equation of the line of reflection. So you can find the line of reflection with constructions. We're going to do that on the next page so we can practice the steps. So for now, I'm just going to um, actually write the equation of the line of reflection as best as I can because it doesn't look like it's going to be an easy line to write the line of reflection of. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to connect the pre-image and image points together because I just want to see where the middle is because remember the line of reflection should be equal distance um, between the pre-image and the image points. Let me just write down what these points were. So I'll just write blue for blue triangle and pink for pink triangle. So on blue triangle, this was negative 7, negative 4. And on pink triangle, this was negative 5, negative 8. Okay, on blue triangle, this was negative 3, negative 2. And on pink triangle, this was negative 1, negative 6. So I want to find the point that's exactly in the middle. So it's going to be kind of hard to do graphically. So I'm just going to use the midpoint formula to do that. So I'm going to find the midpoint of this line segment over here first. So negative 7 plus negative 5, that's negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. Negative 8 plus negative 4. That's negative 12 divided by 2 is negative 6. So the midpoint should be negative 6, negative 6. So negative 6, 1, right here. Trying to do that as accurately as I possibly can. Okay, and then I'm going to just find the midpoint of these two. Hopefully it works out nicely again. Negative 3 plus negative 1 is negative 4. Negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 6 is negative 8, divided by 2 is negative 4. So the midpoint of this line segment should be negative 2, negative 4. So the line of reflection is going to pass right through the middle of each of these line segments. And since I have the midpoint, I can, oops, I'm really bad at drawing lines, but I just was trying to draw a line that passed through both of those points. Let me move that so it goes right through both of the points as best as possible. And it would help if I have a more accurate way of graphing this, but there we go. Okay, so my line of reflection should be going right through the midpoints of each of those two. So my graphing is not 100% accurate because it's really hard here on the computer, but I can, um, write the equation of the line because I do have two points that are going to be on that line. I do have both of the midpoints. So I'm going to write the equation of my line using these two points that I have here. And I'll just use point slope form. Okay. So I can plug in whichever point I want for x and y. 
and then the slope of these two points, I can just see graphically really easily to get from this point to this point. It's so that was the point negative six six. So I'm just gonna go up one, up two, and write one, two, three, four. So that's two over four, so that's a slope of one half. So I'll just use this bottom point over here. So y minus negative 4 is equal to 1 half x minus negative 2. So I have y plus 4 is equal to 1 half x. And this is a plus 2, so plus 1. And subtracting 4 on both sides, I have y is equal to 1 half x. And now I just have to do 1 minus negative 4. Four, and then I am all done with this question. So 1 minus negative 4 is 5. So that's positive 5. And here I have the equation of the line of reflection between the two triangles. Just remember equal distance between the pre image and the image points. For number 20, we need to find the minimum number of degrees to map the pentagon onto itself. So remember, you can take 360, which is the sum of all the exterior angles of any polygon, and you could divide by the number of sides that the polygon has, which is also the number of angles. So 360 divided by 5 is 72 degrees, so that would be the minimum number. And to show you also online, if I start spinning this, it doesn't look like itself anymore, but when we get to 72 degrees, it maps onto itself. If I keep going and going and going, the next time it'll map up to itself is 144, because that's the next multiple of 72, that's 72 times 2. And if I keep going, the next time it will happen is 216, because that's the next multiple of 72. So any multiple of 72 will map this pentagon onto itself, but the first time that it happens is at 72 degrees. So that's the answer, that's the minimum uh, number of degrees to rotate it, to map it onto itself. And for number 21, we need to describe a sequence of transformations that maps quadrilateral bike onto quadrilateral bow. So I already see it's not oriented the right way because B needs to map onto G. But right now B's on the left and G's on the right. So I'm gonna have to flip it over. So I'm thinking a reflection. So I'm gonna try just to reflect over the y-axis just to make my life easier. So one, two, one, two, that would put K right here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. That would put B over here. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That would put E over here. And one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That would put I over here. Let me connect this together so you can see what it looks like. And now it looks like it's oriented correctly because B should map onto G. It's facing the right way. I should map onto O. And they're both at the bottom. K should map onto L. They're both on the left. And E should map onto F. They're both um, at the top. So it just looks like this one needs to be slid up in order to map it on exactly to golf. So we would need to slide it, let's see, um, to make E onto F, one, two, three, four, five spaces. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, to put everything where it needs to go. So, um, what we need to do here, and let me be as descriptive as possible, a reflection that was over the y-axis, that was the first thing that we did, followed by a translation of 0, comma 5, because we were just moving 5 up. 
Okay, so we're going to be constructing the line of reflection here. So let me just get my comp. So to construct the line of reflection, what we need to do first is we just need to connect print image point and corresponding image point. Print image point and corresponding image point. You can do that with your straight edge. After that, we're just going to pick up our compass. I'm going to put it on one of the points. And I'm going to construct the perpendicular bisector. So to construct the perpendicular bisector, it doesn't matter the exact distance you open up your compass. It just should be more than halfway down the line. And I'm just going to make an arc above and below. I'm going to spin my compass around so that I can put the other endpoint on B prime. And without changing the distance of my compass, I'm going to make the same arc using the same distance. Okay, now I'm just going to make a perpendicular bisector of the bottom line. I know this is a lot of um, arcs running into each other doing this on the computer. So I'm going to use a different color for my next perpendicular bisector. So let me get a different color. Let me get purple. And I'm just going to open my compass just a little bit more than halfway. Oops, I keep making an arc accidentally. I'm trying to open my compass up more. There we go. And I'm just going to make an arc above and below. And then using the same distance, because it's a perpendicular bisector, we're cutting exactly in half. I'm just going to make the same arc over here. And we can see the intersection points in my computer grows. That's OK. It's still allowing me to write. So all I need to do now is get my straight edge. And I'll use a different color. And I'm just going to go through all of the intersection points that we just found as best as I can. Oops. And that's my line of reflection. That was the line ABC was flipped over to get A prime, B prime, C prime. So all you have to do is connect your pre-image and image points together and construct the perpendicular bisector of each of the line segments. And then you'll get the line that's exactly in between the pre-image and the image points. Okay, for the next question, we also are also going to be doing a construction. We're going to be constructing a dilation with a scale factor of one half. So remember that the pre-image, the image point, and the center of dilation are all going to be on the same line. So what I'm going to do first is I'm just going to use my straight edge. And I'm just going to, oops, that didn't work out very well. First, let me dot that. I'm just going to get my straight edge. And I'm just going to make a line. That didn't work either. Let me try this one more time. But I'm making a line from the center of dilation to point. Okay, I got it a little bit better. It's not going to be 100% accurate because I'm doing this on the computer, which is really, really difficult. But we try to be as accurate as possible. So I need to cut the distance in half that A is from the center of dilation because we're dilating by a scale factor of one half. So I'm just going to construct the perpendicular bisector um, of the line segment here. So I'm just going to open up to a little bit more than halfway best as I can. Um, I'll use purple for this. And I'm just going to make an arc above and below. And then let me turn my compass the other way without changing the distance. And I'm just going to make another arc over here. So that's my first perpendicular bisector. So let me draw my line through it to make that perpendicular bisector. And where my perpendicular bisector hits the line that is point a prime after the dilation that point should be half of the distance from the center of dilation as a originally was once again i'm not 100 percent accurate because i'm using the computer here which is really really difficult to do constructions on but i'm trying to be as accurate as possible okay i'm going to do it again for point b and i'm going to use uh, more colors here so that it doesn't run into each other so let me connect my center of dilation oops, to point B. There we go. And I'm just going to take my compass. Let me pick that compass up. It's not picking the compass up. Okay, now I'm, now I'm not still picking the compass up. There we go. So I'm going to pick my compass up. And I'm just going to put it onto the center of dilation as best as I can. I'm going to open up 
a little bit more than halfway. And let me use another color. I'm gonna make it red. And I'm just gonna make my perpendicular bisector, so arc above and below. Then, using the same distance, I'm going to flip my compass around, being careful not to change the distance. Put it on the other end point and make the same arc using the same distance. I'm going to connect the intersection points and that is my point B prime. Once again, B prime should be half the distance from the center of dilation as point B is. And then finally, the last um, point that we're gonna do is point C and this one's gonna be the most annoying because it's the farthest one away from the center of dilation. So let me connect the center of dilation to point C. Let me grab my compass and hopefully my compass on the computer can stretch this far. I keep almost accidentally clicking on all my other tabs that are open. So I'm gonna go onto one of the endpoints and I'm gonna construct my perpendicular bisector. I'm just opening as far as I can. Um, I wish I can open further, but just can't. Oops what I wanted to do. Let me change my color. That's what I wanted to do. Okay, and I'm going to make my arc above and below. I'm going to try to go as far as I can because I want to make sure I see the intersection point because I am not three quarters of the way down the line segment because my compass doesn't open any further on the computer. So I'm going to the other end point. Okay, perfect. I see my intersection. That wasn't so, so, so bad. Um, grr. Okay, good thing this construction's almost over. Let me connect through the um, intersection points of my arcs and where it hits the line segment that I originally made. That is my, ooh, let me get my pen back because my computer is just moving everywhere. That is the point C prime. So I'm going to use a different color. Let me use yellow because it's different than all of the other ones to connect all my image points together. And what we should expect to see is a triangle that's half the size of the original and that's half the distance from the center of dilation as the original one was. So it is half the size of the original. It's not bigger. It's definitely smaller. It's half smaller. And it's um, half the distance from the center of dilation as the original triangle was. Notice it's closer to the center of dilation. It's half the distance from the center of dilation as the original triangle was. So we were able to do that using perpendicular bisectors.